ever heard about the AI that's really um, making waves right now? Yeah. Do some pretty incredible stuff, even with some pretty big limitations. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it really is fascinating. It's not just competing. It's like, in some cases, actually outperforming its counterparts. You know, in certain yeah. areas. Yeah. And what's really like got everyone's attention is the cost. <laughs> How they're doing it so cheap. Yeah, it's really intriguing. Yeah. It's like they figured out this like cheat code or something. They're outperforming, but doing it for less. Yeah. Like, how is that even possible? Well, the company behind all this is called DeepSeek. Okay. And they've managed to, like, turn what people thought was a disadvantage into a strength. Oh, wow. Restrictions kind of force them to get creative. So instead of holding them back, it kind of pushed them forward. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I really need to know more. Yeah. What exactly are they doing? Well, they've developed this AI model. Okay. It's called R1. R1. You can think of it as, like, competition for some of the bigger names you've probably heard of. Sure, yeah. But what makes R1 different is it can achieve similar performance using fewer and less powerful chips. Fewer chips, better performance, and cheaper. It's like almost too good to be true. Yeah, it's really uh, pretty incredible. Yeah. Even Mark Andreessen, you know, big guy in tech, he called it an amazing and impressive breakthrough. Wow. Okay, you've definitely got my attention now. Yeah. So how'd they pull this off? Did they like invent some crazy new algorithm or what? Well, it's not so much about inventing something totally new. It's more like a really smart way of using what's already out there. Okay. They basically had to get more out of less. So necessity really is the mother of invention, huh? Pretty much. So they took these limitations and like turned it into this winning formula. Yeah, exactly. And it shows you how powerful limitations can be, especially for startups. Right. When you have to work with less, you have to be more creative. Makes sense. If you're just given everything you need, you're not going to push the limits right. Exactly. But how did this translate to like an AI that's actually cheaper to run? Well, R1 is open source, and it's much cheaper to run than the competition. Right. Probably something like 3% to 5% of the cost of some of the others. Whoa, those are some crazy numbers. Yeah. It's like they're playing a completely different game. Yeah. So to achieve this, did they have to sacrifice performance or, like, functionality? Well, that's where it gets interesting. They haven't really had to. Like I said, R1 uses fewer chips. Yeah. To train their V3 model, they only use about 2,000 NVIDIA chips. Okay. Some others use tens of thousands for similar models. So not only are they saving money, but they're showing that you don't need a ton of hardware to build a powerful AI. Yeah. What kind of impact is this having on the AI community? What are people saying? Well, R1 is getting a lot of attention. People are downloading it and playing around with it on Hugging Face. Oh, yeah. Hugging Face. That's where a lot of developers share new models, right? Exactly. So people who actually build this stuff are paying attention. Yeah. What's the feedback been like? It's been really positive. People are liking R1's search features. Some are even saying it's as good as some of the big guys. And independent analysts have ranked both V3 and R1 models in the top 10 for chatbot performance. Top 10. That's pretty impressive. For something that was kind of the underdog, it's like a power shift is happening in AI. It definitely seems like things are changing. Yeah. Even the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, he's recognized how impressive this is and said, we need to be taking it seriously. Wow. So they went from the underdog to a major player, all because they had to think outside the box. It's a pretty remarkable story. Yeah. What does this all mean for, like, the future of AI? I can't wait to dig in more and see. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this deep dive. Great. Yeah. Okay, so, like, where do we go from here? Like, what does DeepSeek's success mean for the future of AI? This isn't just about one company doing well. It could change how we think about AI altogether. Yeah, you're right. It's like they've created this blueprint for how to develop AI in a better way, right? Yeah, a more sustainable and efficient model. Yeah. So the question is, will other companies see this and start prioritizing efficiency over just like throwing more computing power at every problem? Well, if you can get the same or better results with less, why wouldn't you? It just makes sense. Exactly. And this could like have this huge ripple effect. Hmm. Like imagine if AI development was more accessible, right? Yeah. Startups and smaller companies could actually compete. That would be incredible. More people could work on AI. We'd get more ideas and probably see even faster progress. Exactly. But we also have to think about how this might change who has the power in the AI world. Right now, a few big companies control most of it. Right. But DeepSeek is showing that new players can come in and shake things up. It's like competition is good. It pushes everyone to do better. But what about the companies that have spent a ton of money on the most powerful hardware? Will they have to adapt? 
That's a good question. If everyone starts focusing on efficiency, some of those companies might struggle. They might need to change their approach to stay on top. It's like that classic disruption thing. The big guys get comfortable, and then someone comes in and changes the game. And it's not always another big company. Yeah. Deep Seek shows how innovation can come from anywhere. It's often the smaller companies that are willing to try new things and take risks that end up making the big breakthroughs. Yeah, it's a reminder that ingenuity and a willingness to question things can be really powerful. So with all this in mind, what do you think about the overall direction of AI? It's hard to say for sure, but this could be a major turning point. The idea that bigger is always better might be going away. Yeah, instead of just relying on brute force computing power, we might start seeing more focus on smarter, more efficient solutions. Exactly. And that could change everything. Yeah. How we build AI, how we use it in our lives, everything. It's crazy to think that all of this could come from one company that had to find new ways to work because of a shortage of chips. It is pretty amazing. It shows how important it is to adapt to challenges <laughs> and to see opportunities even where you don't expect them. Totally. And this applies to more than just AI, to any field where people are trying to innovate. Limitations can be annoying, but they can also make you more creative. It's like that saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Yes, exactly. And DeepSeek is a perfect example of that. So what are the key takeaways for our listeners? What should they be thinking about? That's a great question. What are the main points from all of this? So it's kind of wild to think that like a chip shortage could lead to such a big change in AI. Who would have thought? Yeah, it just shows you that everything is connected. Sometimes limitations in one area can actually spark innovation in another. Yeah. Kind of like evolution in nature. You know, organisms have to adapt to their environment. And sometimes those adaptations create totally new species. That's a really interesting comparison. So are you saying that what DeepSeek has done is like technological evolution? Yeah, in a way, I think so. They had to adapt because they couldn't get the best chips. Yeah. And that led them to a new way of developing AI that's more efficient and could be better in the long run. Interesting. So this adaptation could change everything. It could, yeah. It's like this chain reaction and we're just starting to see the effects. But will this impact the average person? Will we even notice? That's a good question. And I think the answer is yes, but it might not be obvious right away. Okay. If this focus on efficiency keeps going, we could see some big changes. Like what? Well, first, AI development could become more accessible. Mm. More people and organizations could get involved, which would lead to more diversity and more innovation. More people, more ideas, more creativity. I like it. What else? We could also see faster progress. Oh, yeah. Developers could try new things more quickly and wouldn't need the most expensive hardware. Right. This could lead to breakthroughs in all sorts of fields like healthcare education, even sustainability. So we could see some really important advances happening much faster, all because of this shift towards efficiency. Mm. It seems counterintuitive, but it makes sense when you think about it. Right. Yeah. And lastly, we might see different kinds of AI applications being developed. With efficiency being so important, we could see more AI that's focused on sustainability, personalization, and integrating seamlessly into our lives. So AI, I, that's not just about flashy demos, but actually solving real world problems in a way that's practical and easy to use. Exactly. Like imagine AI tools that can help us manage our health, learn new skills, or connect with people in better ways. Yeah. It's a future where AI is not about replacing humans, but about helping us and making our lives better. That's exciting. Yeah, I agree. But like with any new technology, there will be challenges and ethical questions to consider. Right, of course. We need to have open and honest conversations about the benefits and risks of AI. We need to make sure it's developed and used ethically. Definitely. We have to be aware of the potential downsides and make sure AI is used for good. But overall, I'm feeling optimistic about the future of AI, especially after learning about DeepSeek. Me too. DeepSeek's story is a great reminder that even when we face limitations, Human ingenuity can find a way. Sometimes the most unexpected paths lead to the most amazing places. So to wrap up, what's the one thing you want listeners to remember from this deep dive? I think the most important thing is to remember that we're living in the middle of a technological revolution. Things are changing so fast. What seems impossible today might be normal tomorrow. Yeah. The key is to stay curious, stay engaged, and keep asking questions. Very well said. And who knows, maybe the next Deep Seek is out there right now, working hard and getting ready to change the world. So to all our listeners, stay curious, keep exploring, and remember that the future of AI is being shaped by all of us. That's a great point. We all have a part to play. 
Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep.